I'm Lucas Block. I'm a painter. I like to think of myself as a colorist more than a traditional painter. I came to Carmel back in oh, quite a while ago in the 70s, uh, not because of the color, but certainly at the time was very struck by the color of this area. Uh, we have uh, such a polychromatic structure here with all the various colors of plant materials and uh, the ocean and beautiful white sand and uh, something starts to happen here. It's a unique kind of experience of like looking at a, I mean, when one does a painting, there's a whole sense of, of composition of colors and variations within the colors. And this area has particular qualities that I haven't seen anywhere else. And it certainly has stimulated me over the years. Originally, I was probably far more uh, interested in uh, abstract thoughts, abstract traditions, uh, but in living here there's a sense of uh, nature scape, nature, and particularly the color. I don't think it's necessarily the, the, that color that's happening in here that I'm trying to recreate in my work, but I do find that I'm constantly being introduced and uh, constantly being stimulated by what's going on color-wise here. Uh, and subsequently, it helps me when I start doing my own work to see some of the uh, inner reactions and some of the, the uh, harmonies that start to happen and, and keeping the intensity level up. And that's probably one of the biggest things of this area is the intensity of the color. I don't know what the physiological reason for that is. Uh, there's some issues about probably the white sand, the ocean, the blues. Uh, there's also some issues about it being perhaps more desert-like than it is in other areas. Like further north, it gets a little bit more uh, more pine, green, 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 green. But around here, you have all kinds of variations in those colors. You have where the palm tree meets the pine. I mean, you have a combination of desert-type uh, plants and, and trees and so forth, as well as uh, the more conventional pine-type greens. And they all work together to create this harmony of color. And I think there's another aspect of that too, which is when one is stimulated by that much activity and color, and I think everyone recognized that, that sense of uh, color and the balances that are going on, it changes how you see them as well, because color really is something that's created in our own psyche, our own minds. We're processing light and converting it and turning it into color for ourselves to digest what's going on. And I think in that way, the beauty of the area, the, the, the sculptural aspects of it, as well as the color activity, sort of stimulates the brain and the mind to see it more intensely and, and so absorb it better. What really has developed over the years with, with my work and, and living in this area is a, a general sense of introspection and meditation. There's really a sense of being in contact with the sensory world which I think has a, a real connection to, for lack of a better word, the spiritual context of, uh, of our life and life experiences. I mean, life here is pretty, uh, pretty gentle, pretty benign in terms of the stresses and pressures, even though as an artist you've got those standard things called finances and uh, getting by. But as a, as a person who wants to uh, explore the experience of living, uh, there's such a great opportunity here to have that, and there's such a wonderful way that... Uh, one keeps getting fed with the best stuff, as it were. And the key is to keep the work going so that you don't just settle down and let it all pass by. I mean, this area has that little bit of that reputation in the history of it where uh, not a lot of progress was made until Western man arrived just because it was basically not necessary to develop too much farther. Life was perfect. And there's a sense of being in a perfect world here. As an artist, that makes... Uh, not a lot of contrast or, or discussion in terms of political and uh, historical context, but it does allow one to explore, as I said earlier, it does allow one to explore that sense of personal experience within the sensory world. 
And I think that's why I work with uh, abstract work, because it, it separates the whole thing from the relative issues of architecture and, and actual nature scape. It's really about the pure energy experience of color. It's like a renewal every time. We don't go from a drastic winter, but we have pretty good rainstorms. But then all of a sudden, all the colors start to happen. We have the acacias coming out and the, the, the incredibly flashy sour grass that just explodes. And of course, the mustards, and then the California lilac, the uh, Pride of Madeira, just the, and all the new greens on the oak trees and the pine, and we, <laughs> God help us, the pollen that's shooting through the air. There's just an incredible amount of color. And somehow the angle of the sun is still a little lower than it would be in the summertime, so the shadows are more pronounced and we get a lot more clarity of contrast. It's a higher contrast, higher key kind of experience. And <laughs> should anyone sort of go, uh, get lulled into uh, that kind of input all the time, it sort of drops down a bit in the summer and we go through the cycle where the, where the colors st start to vary and turn more browns and reds and then the winter comes, grays. And again, we're refreshed again every year. I, it's amazing after 30 years, Still, it's, it's just spellbinding to, to, to wander through the various spots in this area to explore the, just the nature scape, essentially. As far as my own wanderings go, I live in Carmel. And it's, <laughs> with all the changes that Carmel has been through in the last hundred years, walking down to Carmel Beach from my home is still an incredible journey. Whatever happens to the buildings and the, the real estate development and so forth in town, which has certainly occupied a lot of it, uh, that beach is still incredible. It's a mile-long white sand beach. The color of the water is hence very azure, beautiful. And I walk along that beach, one forgets that there's anything that could be uh, <laughs> better, I think. It's still my favorite place to go. Uh, but there's Point Lobos. Then there's the wonderful going towards Big Sur and the incredible scapes there, there with the mountains and uh, the ocean. I do some plein air painting for fun in those areas because it is a, such a great uh, compositional area to go to. I have my studio in Monterey. Uh, I sit on top of Spaghetti Hill. I can look out of my studio and see basically the southern portion of Monterey Bay and look down over the city. And it's a, it's a striking view and uh, seeing the water lit up. It's just amazing. To, it makes it hard sometimes to stare, stare at the paintings. <laughs> but anyway, it's, it's uh, well, how does one prefer the best? You know, is the icing better than the cake? Is the, it's all great. It's just, uh, my home is, is probably the closest thing to me, which is, is Carmel, where I do spend most of my time. I think as my work uh, developed over the years, I kept, of course, being stimulated constantly by where I lived and the, and the colors that are going on. And in my work, color became more and more of an issue as to, the f as to the problems I ran into in terms of color isn't just red, blue, yellow, purple, and variations thereof. It's also an inner interrelationship of color. And uh, that became more and more my interest in terms of it was, a, it was a complication and it was also a fascination. As my work has developed over the last 20 years, I've really tried to focus on how I can take color and turn it into a vibratory experience in a sense of uh, tonal variation, not in so much as saying red to blue, but as in vibration. And tone is more related to music than related to identifying the color. So, and at the same time, because that has become the format of the work, I've tried to enhance the experience to vary it within an emotional context, as well as a, a context that uh, is a new discovery for the viewer and myself. I mean, the process of, of creating the piece is a discovery for myself, and that's why I love to do it. But I tried to carry that through into the painting itself, and that has been a development over the last, I think, 20 years, that that's been more refined. And that's all I can do is it, it keeps, I keep trying to basically refine that process and become more sensitized to it myself and become more skilled in being able to present that to someone who's just coming up to a, a painting, one of my paintings. Uh, and that is probably also very helpful, it, it is very helpful to, to be living in an area where there's one constant reminder of, of the dynamics of color that's going on. And uh, I, I'm constantly having to uh, apply and 
analyze what's going on in the real world and see how I can make that kind of energy develop on a piece of canvas. When someone comes into this area, there's so much input of, of color and light and composition of the, the hills and the ocean. And first people, I think, are struck by uh, just being at the beach, you know, come in from the Bay Area or wherever in the world, and, and it's a beautiful setting. And sometimes it's so overwhelming one doesn't notice what the composition is that makes it even more intense than what we'd find within beaches within 100 miles, which don't have that kind of energy, or areas that don't have that kind of energy. And uh, sometimes people, I think, I see people do things like go to see the sunset at Carmel Beach, which is a beautiful experience if the sun happens to be out and disappearing. Uh, but I think that is still a great way to sort of start to see the dynamics that happens. I've stood on that beach near sunset and watched the color of the sky, for example. We have this incredible sky that starts to happen. It's a reflection of the light from the ocean as well as the sand. And you see not just the sunset, which is very predictable, of course, with the oranges and reds, but you'll see variations of blues that everything that's possible. And it just takes over and goes over your head and you just have to stop and view it. It's one of the easiest things to discover and once that starts to happen I think one becomes more aware the following day of all the color that's going on. You've, you've opened yourself up. It's, uh, it's a romance. It's great.